What's the difference between a prompt that spits out something bland and generic and a prompt that gives you something brilliant exactly the way you want it. I've experimented with AI tools like ChatGPT for hundreds of hours and come up with the perfect AI prompt formula that you can use to get consistent high quality outputs with whatever task you're using AI for. All you need to do is learn these five key elements and include them in your prompt. So the first thing we always want to do when crafting a prompt is to give ChatGPT a specific role to play as. And that's because giving AI a role to play increases its accuracy and creativity. So that's going to give you much better outputs than you would if you didn't assign one. And the role you give AI can be a general role or a specific person. An example of a general role is you are a creative writing coach, critique my work and give me feedback to help me improve my writing. An optional thing you can do here to make that role even more specific is to give it additional attributes you think might be helpful for the task at hand. So things like creative, articulate, intelligent, friendly, helpful, professional, or experienced work really well. Let's expand our creative writing coach prompt and add on you are a friendly, experienced creative writing coach to make that even more useful. You can also get ChatGPT to act as if it is a specific person and that can be real or fictional. As an example, you are Darth Vader. Help me come up with a realistic plan for establishing a galactic empire over the next five years. The only caveat here is that the specific role you pick must be someone that is well known. So when deciding on what role to give ChatGPT, you want to ask yourself what kind of person would be useful in this situation and then give it that role. So if you want ChatGPT to say, edit my writing, the role you would give, you are a professional writing coach. If you want it to give me business advice for my startup, the role, you are a successful SaaS entrepreneur. If you want it to create you a morning routine, you are scientist and sleep expert, Andrew Huberman. And if you want it to write a sales page, you're a highly creative award-winning copywriter. So what do you want the AI to do for you? The next piece of our perfect prompt formula is the action. This can take the form of either a single action or multiple actions laid out in step-by-step -step instructions. And that means the action could be a simple sentence or multiple sentences laying everything out in high detail. Here are a couple of examples to show what I mean of prompts with a single action. So write me a resume and cover letter for a job application, explain fractional reserve banking to me in simple and concise manner, or generate a hundred viral YouTube title ideas for a video on the topic of AI writing tips. All of these are short and sweet with a single action, and that's all you need for these specific tasks. But say you wanna do something a little more complex. That's where a step-by-step multi-action prompt comes in. This prompt turns ChatGPT into a tutor, and it gives specific step-by-step -step instructions for what the AI is to do when it interacts with a student. Student. So your job is to explain a concept to the user in a clear and straightforward way, give the user an analogy and an example of the concept and check for understanding. And then it continues on giving more detailed instructions on how exactly this AI is supposed to act so it can fill its role really well and be 10 times more useful than it would be with a single action prompt. The next piece of our perfect prompt formula is really, really important because it helps us get quality AI outputs that are specific to us and our circumstances. And that is element number three, context. This piece of the puzzle is the key to avoiding the dreaded generic outputs you see all over the place when people talk about ChatGPT. So what context should you give in your prompt? A really good way to approach this is to sit down and ask yourself, if I was hiring a personal assistant to help me with this, what information would they need in order to do a good job? And this is the context we wanna give the AI. So here's a prompt for outlining a paper for a college class. Now, after we have the role and the action, I've included some context that's important to the task at hand. So first is some context about me. I'm a university biology student, and this is for my end of term paper for my fourth year cell biology class. And then I give it a bit of context on the topic I want it to cover, which is epigenetic modifications and cellular medicine. Memory. Let's run through another example. Say I have a business and I use AI to help me do things like write Twitter posts. So in this situation, there's two key components to the context. First off, who are you and what is your business? And second, who is this for, AKA who is your audience? So again, after I have given ChatGPT a role and given it the action to write me a Twitter post, I have added my context. So the context around myself and my business is in green and the context around my audience is in blue. 
I've kept it really simple in this prompt. I only have a sentence for each one, but you can elaborate and flesh that out more if you want it to be more specific. The next element of our perfect prompt formula is the secret to getting prompts exactly the way we want them. But before we dive into the specifics, there's a really cool tool you can use to speed up and automate this process to work 10 times faster with ChatGPT. The sponsor of this video, TextBlaze. TextBlaze is a Chrome extension and Windows app that lets you create shortcuts for frequently used phrases, sentences, or even paragraphs. And this is perfect for your most used prompts or context you use quite often. So say you're using the perfect prompt formula to write really good tweets. You're going to need to give ChatGPT lots of examples to get good writing out of it. So instead of typing out the same instructions over and over, you can automate that with a single shortcut. Save your examples in text blaze, pop your shortcut into ChatGPT, and boom, your prompt is ready to go. The nice thing about text plays is that it integrates with any AI platform, so you can speed things up no matter what AI tool you're using. So if you're all about efficiency like I am, you can try text plays for free at the link in the description below. It's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. So I might have given it away a little bit right there, but element number four in our perfect prompt formula is examples. This is so, so, so important because AIs give out more creative, accurate, and useful outputs when they are given examples to learn from. And providing AIs with examples is also called multi-shot prompting or few shot prompting if you're into the literature on all this stuff. Let me show you the difference between a prompt that uses examples versus one that doesn't to illustrate my point. Say I wanna generate highly clickable email subject line ideas for my email newsletter. So first, let's look at a prompt without examples. Generate 10 attention grabbing email subject lines based on the topic of my email newsletter, topic, AI tips for digital entrepreneurs. And if you look at what ChatGPT output for us, these subject lines are all right. They're all kind of wordy. They're a bit generic. They all end in exclamation points. So none of that is really usable as is. So let me show you what this looks like if we give the AI examples first. Here's what a prompt with good examples might look like. So we're gonna use the same action instructions that we used before, but then we add on the bottom, here's some examples of high-performing subject lines that I've used before. And then I listed out four different ones. This is what ChatGPT spits out, and it is so much better than what I got before. These subject lines are much shorter, snappier, more interesting, and I can already see some in here that I can use right away. Now, it isn't necessary to provide examples in every single prompt. It's really dependent on what you're using it for and whether or not examples would be useful in illustrating to ChatGPT how you want it to output things. You might just wanna do something really simple, but use examples if it makes sense because it'll massively increase the quality of the output. I typically like to provide between one and 10 examples depending on what it is and depending on the length. So for something shorter like subject lines, YouTube title ideas, I might provide 10 examples, but for something longer, like say a Twitter thread or for articles or paragraphs, I might include two or three instead. And hot tip, providing examples is a really great way to train AI to write more like you. The secret to doing this is to provide ChatGPT examples of your own writing. Now those examples should match the kind of content that you're asking it to produce. So if you're writing articles, give it examples of articles. If you're writing tweets, give it examples of past tweets you've done. The fifth element of our perfect prompt formula is constraints and formatting. This covers two sides of the same coin. So formatting is yes, do this, whereas constraints are the no, don't do this. Constraints are important in a way that is a little bit unintuitive. And that's because the more constraints you give AI, generally the more creative the outputs will be. Now, this is actually true for both AIs and for humans. This has been covered in countless articles like this one, illustrating how limitations are crucial to achieving breakthrough innovations. So basically how this works is the more constraints you're given, the more creative you have to be in order to solve the problem. And what that means for us in crafting our prompts is we very rarely wanna give AI free reign in what it can do. Adding constraints is highly dependent on what you're using the AI for, but usually you'll come to a list of constraints through trial and error. So for example, say I'm using ChatGPT as a YouTube title generator, and without adding any constraints in my first prompts, I might start to realize a few things. What I noticed was that 
ChatGPT was generating YouTube titles that tended to be too long, too wordy, and overused exclamation points and sometimes added in hashtags, which are a big no-no. So to fix this, I added a few constraints at the end of my prompt, and they looked like this. Use as few words as possible, ideally 50 to 60 characters. Use universal language, keep it at a fifth grade reading level, and no emojis, exclamation marks, or hashtags. Your constraints will generally be a list of corrections that you know ChatGPT often makes, and you can nip that in the bud by including that in your initial prompt. We've got our constraints, let's add some formatting instructions. The best way to think about this is to ask yourself, how do I want AI to output its answer? Do I want it to do anything in a specific way? This is what we want to include as formatting instructions. So back to my YouTube title generator example, I consider any other formatting best practices that I know as an experienced YouTuber. And based on that, I add the following formatting instructions to my constraints list. Focus on human interest, use numbers when possible, use title case formatting, use parentheses, and avoid heavy segmentation. Just to give you some ideas on what formatting to use for different tasks, here's a couple examples. So we have for a bullet point YouTube script, a generator of newsletter email subject lines, an article, and for a table. Feel free to screenshot this video and use these formatting instructions and constraints in your next prompt. Those are the five elements. Now let's put it all together to see the perfect prompt formula in action. But before I do that, I want to make sure you've also ironed out all of the beginner mistakes that we haven't covered today. I put together this little AI prompt cheat sheet to help you eliminate the most common mistakes and remember the right rules to help you get consistent high quality output with any AI tool you're using. If you want to grab that, it's totally free. You can do that at the link in the description below. The full prompt structure looks like this. You are an expert role. I want you to action, use this framework in crafting your output, and then describe the action via step-by-step -step instructions. This second part here is only necessary if you are doing a multi-step action versus a simple one. And then here's some additional context I want you to take into consideration, add in your context. Here are some good examples I want you to emulate, list out your examples, and list out your constraints and formatting instructions. That prompt structure right there has all of the five elements built in. So what does that look like in action? Let me show you. Here's the full perfect prompt formula set up as a YouTube thumbnail concept generator. In red, we have the role, you're an expert YouTuber. And in blue, we have the action. I have done a multi-step action here that elaborates a little more on what I wanted to do. Then in green, we have the context. I've given the context about my business and my audience. In purple, I have gone and provided examples of different thumbnail concepts that have worked for me in the past. And lastly, we have the constraints and I've given it specifics on what I don't want it to do and specifics on what I do want it to do in its formatting. This perfect prompt formula can be used for just about any task you can think of doing with AI, but there are some super, super common mistakes you're probably doing and not realizing it. Watch this video next to find out if you're making any of these five most fatal ChatGPT mistakes and how you can correct them. I'll catch you in the next video.